All right, boys and girls. Um, today we're going to be taking some notes um, and doing them uh, in this if-then workshop. If you are able to print this uh, set of worksheets out and follow along with me, all the better. If you're not able to, uh, just get out a piece of regular lined paper. These are notes. They're not going to be turned in. You can still follow along and do the math. Okay? So one thing that uh, I am going to say is since this is a YouTube video, you're going to be able to rewind, pause, um, and, and go back and rewatch things that you need to see again. So please don't hesitate to do that. Uh, it's a YouTube video. It's already recorded. I will be there waiting for you when you're ready to move on to the next problem. Okay? So let's start out with <clears throat> kinetic energy. All right? The title of this workshop is If Then, because we're going to examine what happens to kinetic and potential energy when we change the variables, okay? When we change the mass, the velocity, the height, the weight, and those types of things. So when we look at the first sheet here, it asks us to write the equation for solving for kinetic energy. The equation for kinetic energy is Ke equals mass times velocity squared over 2. Okay, so what we're going to do with this and the next two pages that come after it is we're going to do a series of three problems where we have a baseline. Okay, so we're going to find the mass or the kinetic energy of an object with a mass of two kilograms and a velocity of two meters per second. And then we're going to compare what happens when we change the mass and leave the velocity the same or change the velocity and leave the mass the same. So at the end of this, you'll be able to see what impact changing the variables has on the total amount of potential and kinetic energy. All right, so starting with kinetic energy, we're gonna start with, again, this body that has a mass of two kilograms and a velocity of two meters per second, but we have to make sure that we square our velocity. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. I promise. We're going to divide that by 2. Okay? So, I like to keep the math simple. We can do it in our head here pretty easily. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 gives us a total of 4 joules. Joules are the units that we're going to use for both potential and kinetic energy. And we abbreviate it with a capital J. Okay? We're going to compare this answer, 4 joules, to our next two, all right? So again, if you ever get stuck, pause, rewind, and come back to us when you're ready. All right, so we're going to look at now the same body, but the mass has gone up to 4 kilograms. So Ke equals 4 kilograms. The velocity is going to stay the same at 2 meters per second times 2, and again, that has to be squared. We can divide that by 2. Okay, so let's try this. 2 squared is still 4. That hasn't changed. But 4 times 4, now we have 16 in the numerator and our denominator is still 2. 16 divided by 2 is something we can do in our head. It gives us a total of 8 joules. So the question down here is what effect did increasing mass have on kinetic energy? Well, it increased it. I'm not your math teacher, but 8, I'm pretty sure, is bigger than 4. Okay? Now we're going to look at what happens when we change velocity. Okay? So let's start our equation. Ke equals our mass is going to stay the same as it was in the first problem at 2 kilograms, but now our velocity is going to go up to 4 meters per second. So we're going to put 4 in there and can't forget to square it. Divide that by 2. 4 squared, guys, is 16. 16 times 2 gives us 32 in the numerator. Divide that by 2. Um, so we've plugged in all of our variables. Do our reduction here. 32 divided by 2 is 16 joules. So what, did, what effect did it have? Well, it increased Ke again. But it increased it by even more because that velocity factor is squared. Okay, 
Anytime you square something, you're multiplying it by itself. So it's going to increase your, your end total. Okay? All right, this is a good time to pause. Make sure you understand and come back to us when you are ready. All right, boys and girls, we're going to take a look at gravitational potential energy now. Now, with potential energy, we are not going to have a velocity factor. Okay? Velocity is motion. Motion goes with kinetic energy. So what we're going to look at here, guys, is two different gravitational potential energy equations. This one uses weight. Weight and mass are not the same thing. Don't get them confused. If you had me in fifth grade, you've heard this. Um, if you haven't heard it a million other times. So the equation for solving gravitational potential energy using weight is PE equals weight times height. That's it. Weight times height. So we're going to do the same thing we did on the last sheet, and we're going to look at um, potential energy in one equation here, and then we're going to change the weight and then change the height and see what impact that has on our potential energy. Okay, so to start out with, our PE is weight, which is 2, times 2. Again, guys, I'm not your math teacher, but in my world, 2 times 2 is 4 joules. Okay, and again, we're going to compare that to the next two problems to see what impact changing the weight and the height has. So for the next problem here, guys, we have the weight increasing to 4 newtons. Okay, newtons are an important unit. If you see newtons in your potential energy problem, you know that we're dealing with weight. Newtons are the metric unit for force and weight. So if you see the capital N, you know we're dealing with um, the weight equation for potential energy. Okay, so 4 newtons, set this up, PE equals 4, and we're going to keep the height the same at 2 meters. 4 times 2 is going to give us 8 joules. So we'll put that up here. So what effect did it have? Well, when we increased the weight, we increased our gravitational potential energy. All right. Now, we're going to do something similar here, but we are going to increase the height to 4 meters and leave the weight at 2. Pause the video right here and really think hard about what's about to happen. All right. Think about whether it's going to be the same or different from our last one based on the equation for potential energy. Okay? Had a second to think about it? All right, let's do the equation. Potential energy, now we have 2 newtons times 4 meters. It's going to give us 8 again. Okay, multiplication is commutative. So we can switch the order. But 8 joules is our final answer. And compared to our original, it increased again. Okay? Again, guys, this would be a great time to go ahead and pause, wait, come back to it, uh, and we will do our final sheet when we are done. Okay? Hopefully you've had a chance to make sure and clarify everything by re-watching parts of the video. We're going to do our last sheet in this workshop now, um, and what we're going to look for is our new PE equation. This one is going to use gravity and mass. And I know that sounds difficult, but it's really not. Okay? So the way this formula is written is PE equals mass times gravity times height. Okay? Now, this G here is important. G is a constant. Its value does not change. G stands for the gravitational acceleration on Earth. Um, it's the rate at which falling objects accelerate when they're dropped. Okay? In reality, it's about 9.8 meters per second per second. For simplicity's sake, we're going to round up and use 10 for our constant here. So this G here, for 
all intents and purposes is equal to 10. That will not change. Okay? So another thing I want to draw your attention to is how similar these two equations are. Down here it tells you by multiplying mass times gravity, it'll give you weight in newtons. So if we look down here, I'll, I'll jot in the margins here, mass times gravity equals weight. So mass times gravity times height is actually equal to weight times height. The reason that we're using both is because sometimes you're not given weight. You're given mass and gravity, and it's easy enough just to plug it in and to know where that number comes from, okay? So weight is just mass times gravity, but here we're breaking it down to do these problems, okay? Now, same as the last two, we're going to start with our base here, all right? So we're going to start with mass being 2 kilograms and height being 2 kilograms. Notice there's nothing in there for G. Because like I said, G don't change. All right. So potential energy equals mass, which we have as 2, times G, which is 10, times height, which is 2. So 2 times 10 is 20, times 2 gives me 40. So our potential energy is 40 joules here, okay? Now, we're going to do the same thing we did on the other two, and we're going to kind of mess with the variables. We're going to increase one and leave one the same and see what effect it has on our gravitational potential energy. All right, so we're going to increase our mass to 4. So let's go ahead and plug it into our calculation here. So now that equals 4, that's our mass times our 10, which is our gravitational constant, times 2. Pretty simple math. 4 times 10 is 40, times 2 is 80. We end up with 80 joules. So potential energy is 80 joules. So what effect did increasing mass have on potential energy? It increased it. Right? Again, I'm not your math teacher. But as far as I can tell, 80 is bigger than 40. All right, now we're going to increase the height to 4 meters and leave the mass at 2 kilograms. So our PE now equals 2 times 10 times 4. So 2 times 10, again, is 20 times 4, gives us a total of 80 joules. So our PE here is 80 joules, which is an increase from 40 joules up here. Okay? So what effect did increasing weight have on potential energy? Well, it increased. Okay? Because this is a, multiple, a multiplication problem and all of our variables are being multiplied by each other, it makes sense that increasing 1 would increase your, your total. Okay? So guys, again... Take your time, go through this, whether you did it on the actual paper or on um, lined paper or blank paper. These are notes. They should go in your binder, and these should be in your back pocket for when we start working on some problem solving for potential and kinetic energy. Thank you, guys. Goodbye.